Welcome to the Breakthrough and Bloom podcast. My name is Kelsey Marks, and I am your host and your Breakthrough BFF. My mission in the world is to help women who are interested in spirituality really, truly understand who they are at the core of their being, guiding them through the process of healing themselves and really honing into what it means to be human. I intend to be an open channel to allow insights to flow in that help you break through to the next level of who you were always meant to be. With these conversations, we're going to shift some perspectives, okay? And we're going to give you a new way to live the life that you live, allowing the opportunity to truly manifest what it is that you desire. So if you're looking to break through to the next level of who you are, to live the life of your dreams, and to gain a deeper understanding of spiritual topics, well, you have come to the right place. And I know we're going to have so much fun together, and I am beyond excited to have these conversations with you. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode. I am so happy to have you back. I hope you've been enjoying the last couple episodes. I feel like I'm getting into some topics that are more along the lines of what I talk about in my Reiki sessions. And to be honest, it's been really fun to make this podcast without any pressure, without being like I have to hit certain metrics. It's just been really nice. And we're on episode 11. So stoked. Double digits, right? (laughs) I'm literally here at my desk looking out my window just sharing some insights I have about things that I've learned in books, conversations that I've had with others, and light bulb moments that I've had in my own life, in my own day to day. And I'm just here sharing it with you. And it's just really fun. And I'm so glad you're here enjoying every moment with me. And today, I wanted to talk about something that I've been reflecting a bit on lately because of a book I'm actually reading called Soul and Spirit in Dance Movement Psychotherapy by Jill Hayes. In this book, there's a lot of talk about the soul and spirit and ego, which are probably terms that you've heard of before if you're into any kind of spirituality, maybe even just self-help in general, I think is kind of getting that way. And it got me thinking about something that my best friend Kristen had actually sent to me a while ago that had triggered me in the moment, which I thought was really interesting that I got triggered, but I didn't look into it much then. It's just like, huh, okay, my ego doesn't love the fact that something is being, what's the word I'm looking for? Something is being challenged. A belief I had was being challenged. So yes, I scrolled back, full on back into our conversation for, it took me a minute (laughs) to find the text she sent that had made me start to question my beliefs in spirituality, which also on a side note, I think it's important to allow yourself to hear other input on things, on things that you believe, uh, to be open to other points of views, to allow yourself to question your own beliefs to see if new information can positively shape the way you live. I think it's really important just to be open to it. And yes, you're allowed to get triggered, but you don't have to fight back on it. You know, if someone has a different belief than you or is seeing something in a different way than you've seen it before, it's okay to be like, oh shit, this is kind of jarring information for me and I need a minute to like sit with it. Because that's how we grow, right? We we don't know what we don't know. And when new information gets presented to us, sometimes it is alarming to our ego because it goes against what we know to be true and safe. But I think it's really important for us to go into these moments just with like open curiosity and obviously allow our, our ego to be like, hey, this isn't safe and like let it do its thing, let it run its course and get tired and, and stop complaining Um, Anywho, so she was uh, talking about how she was listening to the Michael Singer podcast, which I haven't listened to yet myself, um, which I guess I really didn't need to because I still had the breakthrough anyways. But anyways, um, she was saying how some of the things he was saying were really challenging her beliefs. So I was like, okay, what? Because her beliefs are very similar to mine. We've read a lot of the same books like Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra, the likes, you know. And uh, we've really resonated with these books. We found a lot of great insight and truth in these books for us. 
And she said that the podcast was actually low key, like throwing shade at Eckhart Tolle's uh, belief of power of now without like full on calling him out, but kind of calling out that belief of being like focused on the now about, um, you know, trying to be in the present or trying to be in the now all the time. And he was saying how we're trying to reach enlightenment or to be more spiritual and how the way we're going about finding source is contorted, that we're like chasing things instead of realizing that at our core, we are source and that we actually need to just train ourselves to make it our natural state. Uh, but instead, most of us are like chasing being more spiritual. So when she had said this, my ego flared up and was like, how dare you tell me that what I believe in isn't solid? Uh, like the image that I kind of get when I think back of it is like a bull getting ready to charge at like a red flag. And I know this might be odd, but I don't really listen to podcasts that much. I just, I just make one. So I didn't, I didn't listen to that podcast. Um, but it did stick with me, this concept that we're like chasing enlightenment instead of being enlightened. And you might be thinking, okay, what's the difference between chasing enlightenment and being enlightened? Don't you have to chase it in order to be it? So you know, I was sitting with that for a little bit and I recently had an aha moment with this. And I actually, I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot about this conversation that we had about this podcast. I forgot about this podcast altogether. Um, but it wasn't until I was like reading this book recently that it came back because of some of the things that she had said. Um, so the aha moment I had with this, it might actually make having a spiritual practice easier for you as well, too. So I'm reading this book, which um, I really wanted to read in general because I had heard about dance psychotherapy and being able to move through traumas through movement. And I thought that was really interesting, especially because I had danced for 15 years. So I understood the importance of like moving your body and how like good it feels to do that. And uh, this book I had found, I it just like popped up. I wasn't searching for like a specific book or anything. I just basically looked up the topic and then this book came up. Obviously it was meant to be, I was meant to read it. In this book, she takes time to explain the way that she views the term soul, spirit, and ego, because, you know, soul and spirit and, and ego, they have a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, spiritual connotations with it, uh, religious connotations with it. And she does a really good job at defining these in a way that has no religious context to it. Um, basically, she just redefined the words. They're just simply words that she's redefined. So I wanted to go ahead and read some excerpts from her book that had got me thinking. And since I, I don't want to botch the meeting, I'm just going to go ahead and, and read it. And let's see if it hits a chord for you as it did for me as well. So the first one is... Soul may be perceived as a first response of the body to be to being separate in the externally perceived world, while retaining a sense of wovenness with the inner animate world, resonating and connecting with the inner life of other externally perceived separate beings, sensing self as woven internally into an organic pattern. Soul responding begins in the body and travels through emotion image, and thought, but it, it's the feeling of the soul centered in the heart, which integrates all the experiences of the body-mind, creating awareness of spirit as energy and flow. Although there is a sense of me and my, it, my soul and soul, there is still a mysterious sense of otherness, a sense of connection to a world soul and to spirit. Spirit passes through all living and dying forms. It is energy borrowed by all transient forms to animate and fulfill their brief lives. So basically, uh, spirit is like the energy that flows through all of creation. It's the energy that gives life to, you know, life. <laughs> um, I like to call it source energy, life force energy. Um, she calls it spirit. And the soul is the beginning of the indiv individualization 
mouthful <laughs> of the spirit of this energy. And it's still connected to spirit, to this energy. So it's connected to all that exists, right? Because this spirit energy, the way she's wording it is like how I see life force energy, source energy, which is in everything. It, it's everything exists because of this energy. It, if it didn't exist, if it didn't have the energy, it wouldn't exist, basically. Um, so she goes on to write that progressive spirituality represents not so much a striving towards a state as yet unachieved as it is a process of learning to recognize the true spiritual condition in which we are already living. Listening to a process of life which is happening inside me keeps me in contact with soul and spirit. If I can sense spirit and soul inside myself, I will not look outside of myself for answers. All parts of the body feel and respond to life. Brain-based thinking about feeling and response may dissolve their presence. The heart is a body center like the brain. But while the brain turns sensation into conceptualization, the heart is always present with the flow of life. It is possible to sense feel, imagine, and think from the heart. Okay, so those were two different excerpts. And for anyone who doesn't do any spiritual work already, does this make you think a little bit? Or are some things maybe clicking? Um, or, you know, maybe it's just not resonating at all, which could be true too. Um, but how does it feel for you? And I want to give my thoughts on this as well and how it comes full circle with the conversation I was having with Kristen. So maybe it will help the excerpts of what I had pulled out of the book make a little bit more sense. So this book, it goes a lot into introspection, obviously, in the way of not thinking internally, but feeling internally. Because it's it's dance movement psychotherapy, right? It's all about using the body to speak. It's not using the logical mind to tell a story. It's not using the logical mind to try to solve things. It's allowing the body to present a story through images and feelings and archetypes that you can then look at after once all of the images and the feelings and the movement has been poured out of the body. And it's really about reconnecting the soul back to spirit. So again, reconnecting that individualized energy back into the wholeness of energy. It's reestablishing the balance between ego, soul, and spirit. So ego is that like logical part of our brain that's always telling us this is safe, this is not safe. And then the soul is the beginning of the individualization of our energy and then spirit is the whole energy, right? So it's kind of like those Russian dolls, right? The ego's inside. Well, actually, it, I guess spirit would be inside. So spirit's inside, soul, and then ego is what we're seeing on the outside, right? But in the inside, that middle one, everyone's got spirit. Everyone's got that same energy. And ideally, we want to live a life where they're all in harmony, where there's not one aspect that's ruling your life, that they're all in balance, all completing their necessary jobs and not overstepping on one another's toes. Um, it's very similar to like the yin and the yang, masculine and feminine energy, balancing the logic and the creativity. That's kind of what she talks about is getting, is getting the ego reconnected back to spirit. And that's done through the soul. And by going within, by allowing the images, the archetypes, the emotions and the movement to flow from within, you know, not from logic, but from the depths of the psyche, she says that this is when you really allow yourself to shine light on parts of yourself that would have otherwise been hidden. And I totally agree with that because the subconscious mind, like I, I've said before, doesn't speak in language. It doesn't speak in logic. It doesn't speak in numbers. It doesn't speak in a way that we're used to communicating, right? It speaks to us in, in images and in emotions and in, in stories of things that way, not actual words. So this really made sense for me. Like it's tapping deeper into your subconscious mind, starting to speak the language that it can speak, which is through your body, right? The subconscious mind is totally in the body. It's, it's 
not in the head. It's not in the mind. It's in the body. So what better way to connect to your body than dancing, right? Like it uses your body. It's, it's, it's energy flowing through your body. And, you know, you can't speak the language of the, the psyche, the subconscious. You have to feel it. You have to express it. You have to do it through the body. You have to allow metaphors to come up, archetypes to come up, imagery to come up, emotions to come up. That's how it speaks. And when you're like, no, I need clear facts, words, like you're never going to hear your inner world because it doesn't speak that way. And, you know, it's, it's done in a way that words cannot achieve. They'll just like, how many moments in your life have you felt something that you just couldn't explain? Like you couldn't put a word on it. You couldn't describe how it felt, but like, you just know how you felt. And like, as much as you would love to describe it to someone else and you've tried and maybe you've gotten pretty close, there, we've all had like these moments where we've felt something that we just couldn't explain with words. And that's because it's coming from within. It's coming from the subconscious. That's the language it speaks of just wisdom, of just knowing. And sometimes words, language lacks that ability to express, you know, all of this really deep knowledge that we have. And by letting the story unfold in sessions like this, you allow yourself to reestablish the connection of spirit, of source energy back into your body. You're allowing more of that life force energy to flow back in, to balance everything, to balance the ego and to soothe the soul. And all of this got me thinking that the peace, the calm, the connection, the spirituality that we look for, it's already with us. It's within us. It's deep within us, but it's there. And it's speaking a language that the brain, that logic just cannot decode. And it was never designed to decode. And the body is really an instrument for us to use so that we can speak that language of spirit, that we can speak the language of source energy, right? We have this body for a reason. And if it wasn't needed, we wouldn't have it, right? It's an instrument for us to be used on purpose. Like we need our bodies to connect us back to all that we are. Because earth, as beautiful as it is, is a specific density that requires a life form of our specific density of what we are. And with that, there's certain things <laughs> that we have to experience as well. And the body is really allowing our energy that is a higher frequency, a higher vibration to come down into a lower vibration and experience life at this particular vibration. And I think that's like so cool that there's a purpose for these human forms. There's a purpose for these beautiful bodies. There's a purpose for it all. And this body is, is capable of feeling and doing so much. And we just have to remember that we are so much more than just a brain, right? We're so much more than our thoughts. We're so much more than our beliefs, than just logic and language and numbers. We are so much more. And how does all of this go back to what the other podcast said? I'm going to loop it all back for you. <laughs> so I started to piece together the idea that a lot of times in spirituality, people may teach that you need to quiet the mind all the time, right? That you need to leave the thoughts behind, that you need to connect to the now moment of what is around you constantly, to pay attention to your surroundings, to focus on the breath and that this will bring you back to the self. And like, yeah, obviously, totally. These are tools and ways to do that. But I realized that this isn't like the full way of being when I, when I was reading this. So like doing all of this work of focusing on the now, of quieting the mind, of making the ego, you know, take a back seat and, and all of that thing. It is obviously like really important. And it's opening the door for us to reconnect to spirit to life force energy to source but if you're out there chasing enlightenment so like if you're out there chasing the ability to like leave your body um 
in meditation, the ability to astral travel, the ability to have like wild visions. Um, if you're like chasing the desire of like leaving your body because you want to ascend into a higher vibration by like thinking you don't need the human form because you're just that awoken, awoke, woken, aware, (laughs) whatever. I think you're getting what I'm getting at. But I think if you're so focused on, on not living, you're kind of missing the bigger picture. And the, and the way I'm like saying that is like, it's, it's a balance. It really is a balance. So like, again, hyper fixation on any part of something in our lives is never good, right? Like we have, we have all these experiences and everything for a reason. We're meant to experience all of them. And I think you're missing the beauty of what you have available to you in this body. If all you do is focus on the now and you focus on your breath and you focus on quieting the mind and having no thoughts and meditating and getting out of your body and having really deep psychic experiences, which like, it's obviously a beautiful thing to do. And I'm not saying don't do it. And obviously we want to keep practicing these things because they are really important. And I think it is, again, like that opening door that brings you in to connecting to spirit. But if you just only focus on that all the time and chase enlightenment in this way of like, I need to raise my vibration constantly. I need to learn how to astral travel. I need to open up my third eye so I can embrace my clairvoyance. Like, I think that's a form of self-abandonment a little bit. If you're so focused on doing certain things or becoming a certain way or focusing on being able to like leave your body in a meditative state, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Like if that's the only goal is to leave the body, I think you're just as unhappy living in the human experience as someone who's depressed, right? It's like saying, well, once I reach this state of awareness, then I can be happy. And that's not what spirituality is teaching you. It's teaching you that you are you can be happy exactly as you are right now. There is no state of awareness or awakening that needs to be done in order for you to be happy, to feel worthy of being happy. And don't get me wrong, again, being now, being in the now is obviously really important. And I'm not saying to disregard it by any means. I'm just saying I think that there may be a slight hyperfixation on some things that's not allowing us to live fully. If you only focus on the now all of the time, 24-7, which none of us really do, but that's kind of what like gets preached a little bit, right? How are you utilizing the human experience fully? Because we have this amazing, incredible ability to revisit the past, right? And we have the same beautiful, creative ability to imagine a future. And I think it's important uh, important for us to do this from time to time. I think it's important for us to revisit the past every now and then. I do think it's important for us to imagine a future every now and then. It's about finding balance between all three, the past, the future, and the now. Granted, the only thing that exists right now is the now. The past doesn't exist, so it can't control you. The future doesn't exist, so there's no need to worry about it. But I think it's important to recognize that you still want the capability of being able to look at different timelines like this, right? Because it gives us clarity when we look back at the past. It gives us clarity on what we want and what we don't want, what we like, what we don't like. It gives us clarity on that because everything we go through gives us more perspective. So if we just completely disregard the past, like, come on, are we disregarding everything we learned? And being able to look into the future, it gives us inspiration. It gives us something to work towards, right? It gives us something to create. Just imagine a life without having clarity from your past, where you're just kind of living from the now to now and and none of that information is stored or remembered or utilized. And imagine a life without inspiration, without desires, without creativity. That's kind of dull, right? I think it's just about finding balance. We don't want to be spending too much time in the past. We don't want to be spending too much time in the future. And we don't want to be present only because then we're not growing, really. And having it not balanced is where we kind of struggle, right? 
We want to find clarity. We want to establish desires and we want to take action steps. That's balancing all three of them, right? Clarity is from the past. Desires are from the future. Action steps are in the present moment. I think it's about balancing it all. If we're too focused on the present moment, then maybe we're taking too many action steps without a desire, without an end in in sight. So we're just doing things to do things. Or maybe we're focusing too much on the action steps and forgetting about the mistakes we've made in the past that we don't want to repeat. And I think, again, it's just balancing it all. And the amazing thing, too, is we have the ability to do all of this in our bodies. When we let our bodies lead the conversation, we allow ourselves to experience all quote-unquote times, all timelines. We can revisit and heal the past, which then allows us to integrate more knowledge and to gain more clarity. We can dance and envision a future to recognize and establish the emotions in which we desire to experience. We can move our bodies in the now moment to bring energy and momentum and passion to complete the task we need. And when we listen to our bodies, we'll know what stage we need to be in as well. Are we in the introspective stage? Are we in the stage of looking at the past and getting clarity on what we want? Are we in the planning and designing phase? Are we in the action phase of the present moment? Because we're not meant to be in one season all the time. We're a part of nature, right? We're, we're, we're animals <laughs> and we're part of nature and nature has its seasons. Winter must come to allow us time to rest and to create a blank slate and allow us the opportunity to place seeds of inspiration that can then grow. And if we never let our current summer end, I know everybody loves summer. It's a great season. I love summer. It's my favorite. But if we never let our current bloom end, how can we ever experience the next blossom? How can we ever know if our next bloom in the next year would be even bigger? How can we ever experience more if we refuse to let what needs to die, die? And when we invite the body to speak, when we allow spirit, that life force energy to flow through us, we allow ourselves to become more balanced. There's nothing out of us that will ever give us what we need, right? There's nothing outside of us that's going to give us an answer, There's nothing outside of us that's going to heal us mentally and emotionally. All of that comes from within. And the piece of the puzzle, the piece of, yeah, the piece of the puzzle or the answer that you're looking for, I think it lies in various timelines of yourself. And our bodies can access all of these different timelines of ourselves when we allow the energy of spirit, of source, of that life force energy to flow through us and to tell us those stories, which we can then turn into logic. So all of this is to say, to really get in to spirituality, you've got to get in to yourself. Learning how to navigate the ebbs and the flows of your life, of yourself, of your emotions, of your thoughts, of you. Learning how to observe the crazy river of thoughts that we get sometimes and allowing the blockages that are causing the crazy river in the first place instead of a steady, calm stream. And it's not all about how long you can meditate. It's not about how many times you've astral traveled in your sleep, which for me has been 30 times. (laughs) Not that much, (laughs) because I don't don't really care to. And it's not about how many books you've read or how many retreats you've been on. I don't think it's about any of that at all, really. I think spirituality is really just about learning to be with spirit at the end of the day. It's just learning to be with the energy of all that is. It's learning to be with the energy of all that you are. 
It's allowing spirit, that life force energy to flow in harmony with you, to flow in harmony within this insanely beautiful and complex human form that we reside in. That's what I think it's all about. There's nothing that you need to do, to have done, to have experienced. There's nothing for you to chase. There's no like goals besides just connecting to yourself, to the energy of who and what you are. And maybe that sounds easy and maybe it doesn't, but I know that this isn't something that we're taught. To be able to go within like this, to allow the body to lead the way, allow the body to express the message of the energy within, of the spirit. Um, It might not be something that happens right away for us, but I think it's so important for us to start exploring it, to start getting curious about it, to start wanting to learn and understand the language of our bodies. And it might if you've never done it before, it might low key be fucking terrifying at first. It might because you haven't done it before, right? So your ego is trying to protect you from it there. And you know, there can be a lot of icky and yucky feelings in your body that you may not feel like you're ready to address. But I'm going to tell you right now that you are, that the emotions are just temporary. And by letting them come out, even though it is uncomfortable It is temporary discomfort for permanent release, permanent happiness on the other side. And it might be a little scary if you don't have someone there to guide you. But start slow. Start small. And reach out to those around you who you know are doing similar work or are interested in similar things. And finding your tribe is something that's really fun to do and also isn't like instant, but it is amazing. And also, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm here for you too. I might be the only person in your life who talks about shit like this. And that's fine. I'll be that person for you. I am that person for you. And while I haven't like fully reopened a coaching program or anything, um, I am open to helping anyone who is looking for a bit of guidance anyone who is looking for someone to help them move through something. Um, I'm open to helping anyone who's looking for motivation to get out of a rut. You don't have to do this alone. And if you don't have anyone in your life around you that you can have these kind of conversations with, I would love to be that person for you. I would absolutely love to be that person for you. And we can have these conversations Online, you can message me on Instagram. I would love to get into some deep shit with you. (laughs) And if you feel like you want just like someone to talk to, not to like type to or whatever, we can have a coaching meeting as well, like a coaching session. I don't think people realize how therapeutic it is to just fucking talk sometimes. Maybe that's why I do this podcast. It's my own type of therapy, but I, I don't think people realize how healing it is to just fucking speak and to have someone there to just listen and maybe give you advice if you're looking for it. But if not, to just be like, oh, I'm heard, you know? And if this is something that interests you, go ahead, message me on Instagram. Please do not hold back. I would love to have these conversations with you, especially if you feel like you are alone, like you don't have anyone to have these conversations with, or you don't even know how to, how to start having these conversations. And who knows, maybe we'll we'll jump into a coaching program together. We'll do a little bit of Reiki together. I don't know. It can it can blossom into something really beautiful. But again, just take a moment to reach out to those around you and to start having these kind of con- conversations. So then you can start getting into a different place in your life. Okay, so that's all that I have on this today, and I hope you enjoyed the episode, and as always, if you did, please leave me a review below. Give me your thoughts. I'd love to know what you think, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Breakthrough and Bloom to get tips, tricks, and sneak peek at what my life is like over here, making podcasts and working a full-time job, and if no one has told you this today... I am so proud of you. You're doing amazing, sweetie. 
And I love you. I love you. I love you. I'll catch you in the next one.